Hello and welcome back to another video in the Introduction to Windows Forensics series. In this episode, we're going to talk about Remote Desktop Protocol, RDP, and the Windows Event IDs and logs associated with various types of RDP activity. We'll explore the following scenarios. A successful RDP logon, an RDP logon attempt that was not successful, an RDP session disconnect via someone closing the window without clicking Start Disconnect, an RDP session disconnect via someone clicking Start Disconnect, an RDP session reconnect, and finally, an RDP session log off. For each of these events, I've created flowcharts, which we'll see in the next section of the video, based upon excellent research conducted by Jonathan Poling. That research is detailed in this article from Jonathan's website. As I quickly scroll through, you'll notice that it's quite long and very comprehensive, covering a wide variety of RDP event types and the associated Windows logs. Now the graphics I've created can be used alongside this information to provide a quick visual reference as to the kinds of logs that you may obtain from various types of RDP activity. Now, wait just a second, did I just say may obtain? Well, unfortunately, yes, I did. If you've spent any time analyzing Windows logs, then you know how painstaking and time consuming it can often be. Now, some things are fairly straightforward and easy, but others not so much. The events described here may not always be present for each type of RDP activity. They may occur out of the order listed here or there may be other slight variations. Why? Because Windows. All of that said, it's like putting together a large puzzle and using these flowcharts as a guide can help you make sense of it all. So in the next section of the video, we'll take a look at the flowcharts and briefly discuss each scenario. And then we'll take the first flow of events representing a successful RDP logon and take a look at the logs on real systems within our lab environment. And yes, a nice colorful PDF with all of these graphics, along with a link to this article, can be found in the video's description. So let's take a look. Okay, let's briefly take a look at each of these scenarios. But before we get started, there is one important thing that you need to keep in mind. All of these event IDs and their corresponding logs are going to be found on the target system. In other words, not the system from which the RDP connection is initiated, rather the system to which the RDP connection is destined. We'll start with RDP's successful logon, and you can see that there are four event IDs that will be of particular interest to us, starting with event ID 1149, which has a description of user authentication succeeded. This will be found in the Microsoft Windows Terminal Services Remote Connection Manager Operational Log, which is quite a long log name. From this point forward, I'll just call it the Remote Operational Log. Next, we have what should be a very familiar event ID, and that is 4624, and the type is most commonly going to be 10 for a remote desktop connection, but it could also be 7 for a session reconnect. The description is an account was successfully logged on, and this one is found in the security log file. Now, oftentimes attackers will try to cover their tracks by clearing event logs, which of course, that in and of itself generates an event ID that you should be monitoring for in your SIM. But they'll often forget that, especially with regards to RDP, there are plenty of other logs on the system that store information that will be very valuable to investigators. So keep that in mind. Next, we have event ID 21, which is Remote Desktop Services Session Logon Succeeded. This is located in a different log called Microsoft Windows Terminal Services Local Session Manager Operational. I'll call this the local operational log from this point forward. And then we have event ID 22, Remote Desktop Services Shell Start Notification Received, located in the same log file, the local operational log. So again, these will be for an RDP successful logon. 
Now let's look at an RDP unsuccessful logon. In other words, someone that attempted to connect via RDP but failed to log on. We'll start with event ID 1149 again, which may be a bit confusing because the description is user authentication succeeded, even though this is an unsuccessful logon. That's because this is referring to the network connection itself, which occurs prior to the actual user authentication. So even though the user authentication will fail in this scenario, the actual network connection will be authenticated. Again, this is located in the remote operational log. And then next we have what should be a very common and familiar event ID to you, and that would be 4625 type 10 or 7, which is an account failed to log on. And that's of course located in the security log file. Next, we have an RDP session disconnect where someone simply closes the window. We have four different event IDs that will be of interest to us, starting with event ID 24, remote desktop services session has been disconnected. This will be found in the local operational log. We have event ID 40, which is session X has been disconnected, reason code Z. That's also going to be found in the local operational log. We have event ID 4779, a session was disconnected from a Windows station. That's going to be found in the security event log. And then lastly, we have event ID 4634, type 10 or type 7, which is an account was logged off, found in the security event log. Next, we have a very similar scenario but this is a purposeful disconnect via someone clicking on start and then disconnect. We have five different event IDs in this scenario that will be of interest to us. Event ID 24 is remote desktop services. Session has been disconnected. It will be found in the local operational log. Then we have event ID 39. Session X has been disconnected by session Y, also found in the local operational log. Event ID 40, which is session X has been disconnected reason code Z, found in the local operational log. Then event ID 4779, a session was disconnected from a Windows station, found in security. And then event ID 4634, type 10 or type 7, an account was logged off, found in the security event log. Next, we have an RDP session reconnect. So someone in this scenario is reconnecting to a previously disconnected session. We have five different event IDs here that will be of interest, starting with event ID 1149, user authentication succeeded, found in the remote operational log. Event ID 4624, type 7 in this case, because that indicates a reconnect. An account was successfully logged on, and that will be found in our security event log. We have event ID 25, which is remote desktop services, session reconnection succeeded. This will be found in the local operational log. Event ID 40, now this one's a little odd because the description is session X has been disconnected, reason code Z. It's found in the local operational log, but it turns out that this particular event can also indicate or correlate to reconnections. So keep that in mind with event ID 40. And then lastly, we have event ID 4778. A session was reconnected to a Windows station, and this will be found in the security event log. And for our final scenario, we have an RDP session log off with four different event IDs that will be of interest, starting with event ID 23, remote desktop services, session log off succeeded. This will be found in our local operational event log. We have event ID 4634, type 10 or 7, which is an account was logged off in the security event log. 4647, user initiated log off, also in the security event log. And then we have event ID 9009. The desktop window manager has exited with code X. This is going to be found in the system event log, the only one of these that we have looked at that will be found in that particular event log. So in the next section of the video, 
We'll take a look at the first scenario, which indicated a successful RDP connection, and we'll look at the associated logs in our lab system and see if it matches up with the particular flowchart. So let's take a look. Now let's see this in action. We're back in our Windows 10 VM, and from here, we'll initiate an RDP connection to a server 2016 VM. This successful RDP connection should result in the event seen within the first flowchart we reviewed in the previous section. Let's go ahead and bring up the MSTSC remote desktop client. The IP address of the server 2016 VM has already been entered. I'll enter the credentials. And we are now connecting to the server 2016 VM. We'll go ahead and load up Event Viewer. And on the left side, under Windows Logs, we'll of course see the familiar Application, Security, Setup, System, and Forwarded Events. If we look under Saved Logs, you'll notice two items that are not normally present. That would be Microsoft Windows Terminal Services Local Session Manager Operational and Remote Connection Manager Operational. In addition to the security log file, these are the other two log files in which we can expect to find events associated with a successful RDP connection. Looking at the flowchart, the first event we expect to see is 1149 user authentication succeeded and that should be within the Remote Connection Manager operational log. If we click on this log and then go over to Filter Current Log, we can enter 1149. At the very top, you'll notice a date and time of 5-5-2018, pm That was indeed a couple of seconds ago and that was when we initiated the connection. You'll notice it says Remote Desktop Services, User Authentication Succeeded, we see the user, the domain, and the source network address. So this tends to match what we saw on the flowchart. Next, we have event ID 4624. In this case, it will be type 10. So let's go over to our security log. Let's go to filter current log. We'll enter 4624. At the very top, we see a 4624 event, log on type 10. This is indeed the successful logged on event that corresponds to the RDP connection that I just initiated. We see, of course, the account name, the account domain, a login ID, the workstation name, the source network address, and all sorts of other information that would prove quite useful to us in an investigation. Next, we have event ID 21 located in the local session manager operational log. So let's go here filter current log, and we will type in 21. At the very top, we have a time and date that match our connection. We have remote desktop services, session log on succeeded. And we see, of course, the user, a session ID, and a source network address. So this again matches what we see in the graphic. And then lastly, event ID 22. So let's go up to filter current log, change it to 22. Once again, this is the log that corresponds with our most recent connection. We see the message remote desktop services shell start notification received. And we see once again, a user, a session ID and a source network address. So this also matches up with what we see on the graphic. Now I can tell you that I did extensive testing and I went through the other remaining five flowcharts that we reviewed in the previous section and tested on both a 2016 VM and a 2012 R2 VM. And in every case, all of the event IDs were present and everything matched the graphics. That being said, and as I mentioned in the first section of the video, that's not necessarily always the case. Things may occur in a different order. And in some cases, certain event IDs may not necessarily be present for whatever reason. But again, in my testing, everything seemed to line up beautifully with Jonathan's research and with the associated graphics. So that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to show in this video. I hope this information has been informative for you. Certainly after reviewing Jonathan's article, I have learned quite a bit and it's helped me and my team when we investigate RDP related event logs. As always, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. 
please do like, subscribe, and share. And please also consider supporting this channel on Patreon if you're able. So I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.